you ate crow as well as anybody can. Yeah. You, I give it to you. You really ate it. Yeah. And, and, you, and you owned the whole deal. I have to. But we want to give you your due now because on Wednesday's show you said, I'll be in there on Wednesday and I will deal with you, Skip Bayless. That's right. You have a major issue with the whole Broncos winning but, 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 thing. But listen, listen, when I say a major issue, it's all in fun. You know, it's of course it, it is. Skip and I going Of course it is. But this was this you know, was chance but, but, to punch but, but, back but, but, a little bit. But, 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 but it's, it's, it's important that I mention this because <clears throat> what happens is this. You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers game. Ryan Clark was out. We don't make excuses, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm from that Mike Tomlin school of thought. We don't live in that world. But the reality is, is that, the, you know, sickle cell trait keeping my Ryan Clark out. Hampton and Kiesel and those boys getting injured uh, during the game. You know, having about four or five starters out of that defense, contributing to it. What I was saying to Skip Bayless, more importantly than anything else, is that whether it's that game with the Pittsburgh Steelers or a multitude of other games, I'm not from the Mangini school and, you know, some of the things that they've said about him with Tebow. My biggest issue with Skip Bayless is Skip Bayless will go and say, well, this is what he has up against him. And this is what he might might lend to him losing the game, okay? Is it, so, so, is so, it so, truth? No, 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 but that's not the point. Oh, oh. What I'm saying to you, there's a lot of truths. There's a lot of truth to what I was saying about what the Steelers walked into the game with, okay? Yep. And the impediments that, but at the same time, it didn't stop me from coming on the show and eating crow Monday because you know what? I put my, my name on the line and said, Tim Tebow can't do this. There's no way he could do what I saw him do. Skip doesn't do that with Tim Tebow. He'll do it with anybody else. But with Tim Tebow, what he does is, okay, Steven, I know all of that stuff with the Steelers happened, but you know what? This guy, I still believe that the Steelers can find a way to win. I think that guy, I, I totally agree with you, Steven. They're going to get him. Then he wins, and he performs well, and he's sitting here celebrating with, and with everything with the crown on his head. Like, oh, my God, look at what I've done. And he's done it time and time and time again with Tim Tebow. And what I am saying to you in front of a national studio audience, a national audience, rather, television I audience. wish we did have a studio audience. Yeah, yeah, they did. They, 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 they booing you like crazy. Right? <laughs> only in Denver. Only in Denver. But I will say this to you. What I will say to you in front of everyone is this. Stop hedging your bets. If you're going to pick Tebow, pick him. If you're not going to pick him, don't pick him. But don't sit up here and, and, and go one way or the other because it makes me look like I'm losing to you, and I don't like it because I'm usually beating you. So I don't like the fact that it looks that way, okay? Stop hedging your bets. Stand up, and if you think Tebow's going to win, say it. If you think he's going to lose, say it and deal with it. That's my issue with you. Thank you for giving me the platform to respond to this because this is a very deep and very provocative topic. Sure. You have expressed to me again and again and again, it's your fault. It's like all my fault. Yeah. And you know what? I must admit, I have become sensitive to that right. because I do think I have detonated some expectations that this kid cannot live up to. Like, it is my fault. It's a little unfair to the kid. Really? Yeah, I do. So you, you agree okay. with some of that? Okay, but what have I said from the start? Nothing more, nothing more than he can be a successful starting National Football League quarterback. I never said pro bowler. Have I one time? No, nope. I never. I definitely. Fact, you said he probably won't make a pro bowl. I, I definitely didn't say John Elway, the next Elway. I, and well, as God is my witness, I never said second coming. Have I ever said that? No, you have. Thank you very, very much. So all I've said is he can be successful unconventionally. Mm -hmm. He is shattering the mold, and he will continue to throw effectively enough to win games. And maybe in the future, at some point, if they surround him with better pieces, he could win a Super Bowl. Right, He's let, capable. Let me, okay? let me take it to a deeper level to touch in, because I want, I want you to respond to what I'm about to say, because it's very important. It's, talking about, it's touching on what, exactly what you want to touch on. I've known you for 16 years. I have never seen you this way about an athlete, ever. Okay, now, and, and Finn, I have never seen, now, I'm not saying that, but I'm not saying that anything that you, anything that you okay. said in any position that you take, you've been consistent and you've been accurate. Everything you just explained, I'm not disputing it, but you have to understand whether, no matter what NFL analyst you want to pick on, anybody who has disagreed with you on this subject, it has gotten so heated that it has appeared to be personalized okay. by you because of your support for him. Now, you never said that he was going to be John Elway, anybody like that, but you called out John Elway for not supporting oh, him. Oh, definitely. You called out definitely. John Fox for not supporting him. Because they have not. But, but I'm saying, but think about the level of support you gave a kid okay. who, 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 by the way, at 
Now, as we sit here after the Steelers game, certainly you look to some degree prophetic. But to another degree, there were times when I really stuck up the joint. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Glad you asked that. Yeah. All I ever said was, to put, use the analogy, I've only said the glass is definitely half full. Everybody else sitting over there, everybody across this network and other networks said the glass is empty yeah. from the start. They all said, bust, garbage, can't play, you agree with can't that? throw. Okay. Because, okay. okay? All right. So I'm a fighter. You know me. I'm a fighter. So my defense, just defending him week after week after week as a young quarterback who still hasn't started a full slate of, of a regular season games, as a kid who took over a sorry one and four team, my defense comes off like I'm a Tebow nut, like I'm a zealot, and I'm yeah. over the top, as Eric Mangini accused me of being on Monday morning. Okay, okay. Okay, I can't help it. I'm just fighting back. Wait. I'm just saying the glass is half full. Yeah, but what I'm responding to that is what, let, let, me lend, let me lean towards a Cordell Stewart and what he was trying okay. to explain. What I'm saying to you as somebody who's known you for so many years and we're very tight with friends, you have to understand that there are people who look and view themselves and people that they've seen in NFL history that have experienced the same kind of position okay, or disposition that, that Tim Tebow was in. I've respected and appreciated it. Oh, yeah, but I'm not saying you haven't. What I'm saying to you is that, Skip Bayless, you've been around for a long time. You've been a journalist for over 30 years. We have not seen that level of support for people in a similar situation to Tim Tebow from you. Tebow from you. Too hard. That's what I'm saying. Do you think that... No. No. This regime demoted him to reportedly fourth string in training camp? You, you want to talk about, dis case. if I could use the operative word here, discrimination? Okay. Did he get a shot? He didn't even get a shot. It took that team falling to one and four and get hopelessly behind against the Chargers at home for them to finally yeah. say, let's give him one fourth yeah, but, 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 shot. But, 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 where, but where you're, to me, where you're wrong about that particular comparison, Skip, is that John Fox and John Elway said, we have preseason. We have practices. This is what we saw. So my point to you is this. If this is what they saw as professionals, as aficionados, as paid decision makers on that level, it's one thing for you to say, I don't agree with that decision. It's another thing for you to so vociferously come out and speak so adamantly, so emphatically in support of a kid that really, at the time, I'm not saying he didn't deserve it in terms of uh, of his accomplishments on a collegiate level. Of course, we can't question that. And, of course, you pointed out how he played well in the regular season last, last year. year. But at the same time, usually we look back and we look at a kid like that. You know what we say? All right, we don't agree with them, but we move on. It was always a story to you. It was always compelling for you. As I said, I said, quote, unquote, during training camp, this will be the worst mistake John Elway makes as an NFL executive. Okay. Okay, so that he finally gets a shot. Jay pushes me in the corner. Predict. We did it in two installments. I predicted a 7-4 and four finish for Tim right. Tebow's starting quarterback, right. and he pulled that right. off, unfortunately. But Skip, you were back talking about that. Tim Tebow okay. when he wasn't playing. Even I, when he I, wasn't I, playing, you were talking about Did I give up? Did I back off? Never. No. Never. No. That, and okay. I, that's, that's where they get it from. Okay. So you came okay. at it hard. Okay, so now let's get to what happened. Okay, so you came at me hard last week, and you said, you spin everything, Tebow. But all week long, I sat here and said, he just played... A, the worst fourth quarter of his football life in Buffalo, followed by B, the worst game as a starter in the NFL for four quarters against Kansas City. I didn't defend one ounce of that. No. So it came game time, and you said, who you got? Well, I had Pittsburgh playing New England for the AFC Championship. Am I going to back off that? Am I going to flip on my prediction? No, you never did. What that. happened on Thursday and Friday? Rampant reports that Tim Tebow was one series or maybe even one play away from Brady Quinn. Well, am I going to bet on that? No. You give me a break. No, it's over. There's no way. It's the number one defense. Are you kidding me? So I'm saying they got no shot, and it's from my heart because I don't believe it. So now we fast forward to New England here. Excuse me, Jay. I'm getting too worked up. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. I, I picked New England to win right, the right, Super Bowl. Right. Do I think they have a little better shot, Denver, against New England, just because they played them close or, or fairly close for about three quarters in, in Denver a month ago? Yeah, I give them a little better shot. But... And I'm, I don't want to go on record yet because I'll save it for Friday. Am I leaning to New England in this game? Sure I am. 
I've been pushing Brady for MVP for the whole year. Well, and why, okay, to your point, why would you why would you bail now? You had New England in yeah, the AFC Championship game at the what's start. What's realistic? I'm not a Tebow nut. I'm not a zealot. Is it realistic to think Tim Tebow can go to Foxborough and beat Tom Brady? Not really. I mean, you're not going to hear it from me because I've been real about this from the start. And, and two, I'll point something out because I, I hear a lot of people saying, well, he didn't pick Denver to beat Pittsburgh. I, you will agree with this. Even if you think a player can play in this league, which is what Skip has been saying, that doesn't mean you pick him to win every game. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I, know, I, know, I know. we have to move. Well, I know, say, we, have, I know we have to move on. So I'm not going to belabor the point. I understand his point, and I definitely hear where he's coming from, and I know him well enough to know how he feels and how sensitive the subject is to him, and how consistent he has been. But what I'm saying is that you have to take a t at times. You have to take history into consideration beyond Tebow. Yep. And when you look at beyond Tebow, and then you bring Tebow into the equation, when you see somebody like Skip come out and speak so adamantly, so emphatically and consistently about this young man, even at a time when people looked at his efforts as being marginal to be kind, that's going to lend itself towards people thinking those things about Skip. And you got to own that much. As wrong as it may be, for people to assume what you're thinking and why, you have to respect the fact that they have a foundation to have those feelings. That's all I'm saying. Sure. And that's, that's all I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a fair point you're bringing up. I'll, I'll be